Hey, what's up everybody? It's Edel Ness from MimicMethod.com and in this video I'm going to talk about something I discussed in the last video which is sound processing. So in my last video I talked about how conventional learning or methods will train you to look for words with spaces in between them when native speakers are speaking your target language and you will constantly struggle because of this because those words with spaces between them don't exist. Words blend and flow together into a constant stream of sound. Therefore, if you're training yourself to process words, you won't find anything. Instead, you need to train your ear to process sounds. And that's one of the first things we do in the Mimic Method is train you how to do that. And in this video, I wanted to demonstrate to you what the highest level of sound processing looks like. It's how I'm able to mimic things so effectively and easily and how students who complete our program are able to do so as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go through, um, I have a couple of, I like the easy languages channels and I have uh, for French, German and easy Portuguese, European Portuguese. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate to you a transcription uh, convention that we created at Mimic Method that perfectly captures what exactly is happening at the level of sound, um, both at the level of what the phonemes or the vowels and consonants are, but also another important level, which is how air pressure and, and airflow dynamics are occurring. So let's just jump into it and then I'll talk through as I do it. So let's start with uh, French. I'm just gonna just pick a random French video and a random section of that French video. And I put this at a uh, 0.5 speed. All right, so we'll just take that little section there. And again, so if I'm learning, if I'm learning the traditional way, and I'm learning like with these words here, I'm like, oh. Vous partez ou vous uh, arrivez, right? I might have an accent to it, or maybe even worse, I don't even know how the things are pronounced and I'm applying my English letter to sound system to it. So I'm like, oh, vous, uh, vos partez, oh, vos arrivez. And that is very common. People do that all the time and it's completely unnecessary because they wouldn't have said that had they just heard the sound without the letters. Right, But anyways, let's come back to what we're trying to do here, which is really focus on what are the sounds being said here. So it'll sound like this. Alright, so right now I have that in my head. So it's going to look like this. And Damn, you are too correct. Vous all right, so you're gonna look like, what are these crazy symbols? These aren't that hard to learn once you go through our system one by one, so I won't go into detail on what they are, but just hear it one more time. All right, so first off, I talked about airflow dynamics. So what's happening is when we put things in parentheses in my system, then that indicates that you're closing off the airflow with these articulators. So the P sound is made with the two lips, but there's two parts to make in a P. There's closing the airflow preceding it, voop, and then there's releasing it into the next syllable. Voop, bah, voop, bah. All right, so you can hear that. Voop, bah. Same thing here. She closes the tip of the tongue to the alveolar ridge. And this symbol right here, by the way, is uh, one version of the French R sound. 
part... Ouais. Tu vous arrivez là. Vous partez ou... Vous partez ou vous arrivez... And then this right here is when you close it, the back of your throat. Ah, like that. V, V. Ah, 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 là. Vous partez ou vous arrivez là? So this is how I'm hearing it. So I'm not really seeing these letters in my head like a closed caption. Um, I'm just feeling it at this point. But the way the process works is you do lots of transcription and then you basically capture, uh, imagine these are the Lego pieces of French. These, these are just movements. Vous partez ou vous arrivez, right? And once you do this enough times, you kind of get all the Lego pieces. So when you hear someone speaking, it just automatically fits into your brain, right? And, and then the meaning emerges out of the sequence. Vous partez ou vous arrivez? And then she says, uh, Vous partez ou vous arrivez là? Vous arrivez là. And actually, it's not right. She said, V là. I cut off too early. All right, so that's my French. Vous partez ou vous arrivez là? All right, and then we'll just do next uh, some German. Alright, so this one is gonna be like this. Gan German's a bit interesting, especially with their airflow dynamics. Gan scoot. Gan scoot. Uh Ganz gut findet, gut findet, gut fin. Damn, you are the correct. Ganz gut findet. I think it's like that. Let's check it out. It's glaub wichtig, trotzdem. Ganz gut findet. Actually, you know what? It's in all, trotzdem. Ganz gut finden. Ganz gut finden. Actually, she's kind of saying that. Ganz gut. So I'm gonna take that back. Ganz gut. Ganz gut finden. All right. Actually, so it's not ganz gut. Ganz gut finden. Actually, I'll say, I'll say it for now. It's good enough. Gan. So here in German, they do a lot of air pressure dynamics. In fact. I'd say this is the number one thing that really holds people back in German is the degree to which they do all these ganz gut findet trotzdem, ganz gut findet allen trotz that, that kind of staccato thing going on. You, how do you account for that? Because once again, if I'm reading this, I'm like, uh, trotzdem, <coughs> excuse me, ganz gut findet. So all kinds of weird stuff happening in German. Let's do some more. Wichtig. So like a wichtig would be like this. Wichtig. I stop it with my tongue. Wichtig. 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 All right, here one more time. Ganz gut findet. It's glaub wichtig. It's glaub wichtig. Alright, and then just to finish this up. And again, don't worry, these symbols. What a symbol that you've never seen before usually what it symbolizes is a sound that does not exist in English. And you'll notice the way you spell, for example, wichtig in German is like this. If I come in here as an English speaker with my like trillion repetitions of English letters and orthography to sound, I say which Wichitig. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not right. Uh, Wichitig, right? Wichitig. But, you know, my, oh, I have to kind of code my head. Oh, no, in German, the W is a V sound, and then, you know, uh, the CH in certain positions is a H or a H, but right now it's a H, you know. So 
this sound doesn't exist in English, so most people mispronounce it. Um, you know, this is the ik bin Iberina or whatever, like ich, that sound here, people mess up all the time. So it just gets confusing, especially in German and English. But if you do this system, this is a universal system and we're capturing not just what your, each letter is not just representing what your articulation is, but you see also as well, we have the system for capturing the way airflow is processed. And in a second, I'll talk about this a bit more and how it helps you practice the flow of speech, but we'll just do one more real quick. Um, let's get rid of all this and do Portuguese. Another language that people struggle with a lot with the understanding because of how they they drop the vowels and, and blend things together. Não sei. Não sei. Let me do 0.5. O fá de vida. All right, there you go. That's a good one. O fá O fá da vida. Vida. I think that's what I'm hearing. É. Não sei. O fá da vida. Alright, o fá da... And then this is actually going to be... Uh... Actually, what's she saying there with that bell? É. Não sei. O fá da vida. Yeah. Da vida. This is a little, a little, the vida. The. Yeah, one more time. No say. O fa de vida. O fa de vida. Right, so again, if you do our program, you understand that this is an u, this is an a, this is an e, this is an e, and this is an a, uh, distinct vowels. But notice in the, what she's saying here in the word, if I were word processing her, uh, if I were word processing her with my English letter system, I'd say, oh, fado da vida, right? Um, but maybe I'm a bit wiser, I know O is an U, so I say, u fado da vida, uh, right? But you count the syllables here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here I only have five syllables, u fado vida, so that's an example of how um, this actually, like, um, this syllable here actually gets dropped and merged. So she's like, oh, fada vida. So this is what's really happening in speech. If I try to hear this in it, I'm going to be completely lost, which most people learning European Portuguese are for this specific reason. And um, so, o fada vida is what she's saying here. And um, also this thing here is like a th, th, like it's kind of D sound, like it's dragged through rather than the airflow of a hard D. Fa, do, da, vita, u, fa, the, vi, the. It's a continuous airflow. So this ability I'm just kind of demonstrating to you here is something you train at the final levels of our, of our program. It's a bit challenging at first, but then once you get into the hang of it, it's a game changer. All of a sudden you just process speech completely different. So people see me, someone commented on a previous video for, uh, I kind of randomly found a Turkish video and we're just like, like mimicking it. And then someone I think was Turkish was like, wow, you're really good at mimicking that. And what I'm doing is I'm just sound processing. It's completely, it's perfectly analogous to what you would do as a musician, where after you transcribe a bunch of songs enough times, when you just hear a music, you can just hear the notes and then reproduce the notes. In fact, you only need a transcription for that. That's how, that's the origin of mim method. That's how I learned violin as a kid. I learned by ear. They, I was very young and they play a song and then they teach me how to like, just hear those notes and play them on, on my own without having to think about it or see it written down. So that capacity is what I adapted for our language program. And the, the overarching point here is that if you learn and train your mind to do this versus training yourself to first understand the language through this form, and then, great, now I can read and write okay, but when I go into speech, I have no idea what's going on because they're doing something completely different, right? 
Final thing I wanted to talk about here is we, this is, we're focusing on hearing, but this system we have here is also very good or really effective for training your capacity to speak as well. So this is actually in our course when we cover this section and um, this technique. And what we do is we take a phrase like this one. Hicimos aprender la despedida. Hicimos aprender la despedida. Right? And so that's that Spanish phrase. And then we've broken it down here, as you can see. Quisimos aprender la despedida. And what you would do to practice this is the difficulty people have when saying something fast is the transitions between syllables. So what happens is you can't say something fast, so your, your teacher says it's slow for you, right? So you want to say, hey, what are you doing tonight? But the teacher says, hey, what are you doing tonight? And that's easier for you to mimic, but it's not the same physical thing. You're doing a completely different articulation, different pronunciation. So you need to be able to slow down what's actually being said so you have time to practice it. In order to practice anything, you need to do it slow first. So what this system does is we train you to slow down on the transition points while keeping the same airflow dynamics because that's the most important thing. So this is what it looks like. Quisimos aprender la despedida. So what she did here is we got these different um, pressure segments here and then dwelled. You get past the first phonemes as quick as possible and then you dwell on the last one. And then what you would do is you'd practice with, you know, her and do it along with her. Quisimos aprender la despedida. So you notice we're kind of like choreographed dancers, like I'm just moving my mouth and lips and tongue exactly the same as her, the same timing. And then once I have that in my motor skill, all I do is I just cut the amount of time I spend on the transitions bit by bit. So it starts off, quisimos aprender, then it goes, quisimos aprender, quisimos aprender, quisimos aprender, quisimos aprender, quisimos aprender, quisimos aprender la despedida, right? And then I can start to rattle it off much faster if I just kind of take my time and build it up. And then just being able to pronounce this one phrase the same as the, the native, quisimos aprender la despedida. Even though it's just one phrase, that process you undergo to get those details of the airflow and the articulation and everything in your body, well then, again, you walk out into the streets and hear people and then boom, now you understand things way better. You're mimicking and picking things up much faster and the world is now open to you. So the final point to all this is a kind of a first principle here is that if you want to learn something, you need to know what that thing is and then break it down into precise, accurate pieces, and then build it up. And the problem with the conventional method is they, they take the real thing of speech and then they abstract out an imaginary thing, which is the written language. And then they focus all your attention on that written language. You're not even using your ears that much. You're just using your mind and your eyes. Uh, and then when you come into the real thing again, it's still new to you. It's still foreign and unfamiliar. So what I'm thinking is like, well, I want to know what this thing is. So that's why I created this transcription system that actually matches accurately and precisely what the actual acoustic reality is. And then you go through this process of entraining that into your body and training that into your ear. And then the process of learning and speaking and listening all becomes infinitely easier as a result. So hopefully that gives a bit more color to what it means to be a sound processor versus a word processor. So again, if you are a word processor, which many, many of our students are, and as a result, you're struggling in the language and these ways we describe, do not worry because in our program, when you do this process, you can make the switch 
from being a word processor to a sound processor and then unblock the flow of the language coming in and out of you. So hopefully that wasn't too technical and you found that useful. If you liked it, leave a comment, like, subscribe. In the next video, I think I will uh, share with you what the updated curriculum for my methodology is where we mix pronunciation and conversation techniques together to make it one kind of more holistic enterprise. So if you're interested in that, again, subscribe so you can find out when we talk about it and uh, stay tuned for more content. Thanks for watching, guys.